Hello, Whiplash here from PH Studios. This is a remake of the XMA basic tutorials. Now the difference between this one and the old one is I will not go into C sharp. That's one of the many complaints I had about the basic series. So I decided to drop those and go to complete games only but then people wanted me to go into the basics so I'll eliminate the C-sharp and just go into the basics for XNA. So now we, before we go into the engine I'm going to show you some stuff you can create with XNA and I'll just show you the game I made for the XNA complete game series for number two and that's Space Shooter. I will not show you game one because I don't have a video file of that and I don't want to download that video one or game one file so let's just play and I'll show you what kind of stuff you can create with XNA now this is a menu system you can have it do all sorts of effects like the bubble effect you see here and then the help menu you just saw and now we're in the start menu or start screen where we can fire at the enemies and move our ship around and they fade in and out and here's a pause menu which I just tied that to escape so that's the kind of stuff you can create with XNA you can get more in depth later on I'm creating a tower defense game for game number three and it should be done in a few weeks or a month or so depending on how complex I really want it to get so until then we'll just deal with basic series and I'll have a few prequels to game 3 that cover like sprite sheets and how to play audio files and stuff like that so the whole game does not take 80 hours to complete okay so now for this tutorial it's just an introduction I'm just gonna show you the basics of X and A and the basic engine it shows you and the code it generates right away so before you continue you can pause this you need the Visual C Sharp 2008 Express Edition or Visual Studio 2008 the full edition now you need the XNA framework 3.0 and the .NET 3.5 I believe or 3.0. So you need all that stuff before you can create your XNA games. And if you have any trouble, just let me know, and uh, I'll try to help you from there. And see if I missed any prerequisites. I will make a posting about that later on as well. If I did miss any. Okay. So enough talk. Let's work on the coding. So you start your C Sharp 2008 Express or the full Visual Studio 2008. You go to File New Project. And I have 2008, so I need to go to the Visual C Sharp main category. XNA Game Studio 3.0. And it's going to be a Windows game. Let's call it Intro. And it will generate our code for us. Now let's take a look at the right side of the window. And it's the Solution Explorer and the Properties window. Now, if you just installed your uh, Visual Studio, either C Sharp or the full thing, you might not have the Properties window open. To do that, uh, go to View and Properties window. That's how you get that. Okay, so let's look at the Solution Explorer property window we won't look at for right now for this tutorial. So the Solution Explorer is all your content, all the things your game has in it. Every class, every image file, every sprite, every audio file, everything that is in your game and that is being used is in this window here. Now the content, this is where all of your 
sprites and audio files go that your game can manipulate and use and everything else should be outside your classes and everything and of course you can have multiple projects inside one solution and uh... you can rename it later on so let's look at renaming the game1.cs now you're may not need to worry about this for your first few games but when you get into very large games game1.cs over and over again might not be very helpful so we can just double click that or right click and select rename and let's just change that to intro game.cs and then it will ask us are you sure you want to perform this rename and just click yes and then it will rename public class intro game okay so that's it for the solution explorer for now now the error list and output is what you will like to see most of the time and if you don't have either one of those just go to view and select the ones you don't have alright now let's just do a quick overview on the code that you see here right after you initialize the uh, start the class here is where you put your private data and uh, class attributes and all the stuff that can be used and you can put public static here as well or just static now we have the constructor and basic things like the graphics and the content the root directory that's where you initialize here anything else like your position and your objects you want to initialize in the initialize method and they do a very good job commenting so I'm not going to go in depth on these you can just read their summaries and comments about them now the load content is where you bring your images audio files everything that you need to use that's in the content sub uh, that's a sub project not a folder this is content dot content project so that's technically a sub project inside of a project so anything inside the content sub project you want to load here and anything inside the sub content project that you have loaded needs to be unloaded at the end of your game in the unload content method here now the last two update and draw these are words you will be probably using ninety percent of your coding time manipulating the update you want to update the ship's rotation you do that here if you want to update the ship's position you do that here if you want to get input from the keyboard you do that here now of course you can do everything in one giant huge class we can separate like input to an input class and you just update the input class here and do the same thing for draw you'll be drawing your sprites here and stuff like that and game is basically just a fixed image that is cleared every loop and redrawn that's why you see clear here and then you can change the cornflower blue to let's say dot black and now we press F5 to compile and run it's now a black window instead of cornflower blue so you can change the background of your project here now that's basically it for this tutorial now let's go into drawing images or displaying sprites.